Hi, everyone. This is Lynn Davenport, Mary Lowe, and Kayla Lane with Families Engaged for Effective Education. And we are here for another episode of Tick Ed Ticked. And we are talking about a very important story that broke this week. And it's been um, quite a sensational story because it is about a sex worker, a prostitute who was put on the godly ISD committees, such as the bond committee, and she was uh, she had a, a cheer camp that she was doing on the premises of the school. She was in the dad's. She started the dad's club. A number of uh, points of which she had access to children. And um, the the issue was brought to the attention of the godly ISD superintendent. And we're going to talk about that today because the way that they handled it was they didn't handle it, and thus this went viral. This story. And I'm going to pull up. Um, uh, before I introduce you, Kayla, I'm going to pull up the, I'm going to split the screen and uh, pull up the article so people can see, uh, they can look up the article for themselves. And we've got the parent, which um, really is, is kind of insignificant, this Ashley Ketcher side, because the story is not so much yeah. about her. It's about the protocols and the breakdown of the firewall in godly ISD, which should have caught this. And they chose not to deal with it the way that they should have. And now we're dealing with this um, issue calling. Oh, shoot. I just dropped that. Sorry. Anyway, go ahead, Kayla. You can start uh, telling your story. Well, so Kayla, real quick, I want I want you to tell, like, you know, how did we meet? Why was I coming? Why was Families Engaged even coming to Godly? Do you remember what you were going through when we started coming out to Godly? I, I it just, you know, the list of it is so long. So if you would just help us out here and remind me of what brought Families Engaged to Godly. Sure. And before I go into that, I just want to say why I got involved in Godly ISD. My children were students in the district. And the reason I got involved um, fighting the district was during the mask mandate in March of 2021, after I had repeatedly been told I couldn't speak at school board meetings about the masks. Um, I couldn't speak at a parent teacher organization meeting about the masks. I finally got a petition together from parents, had over 300 signatures of wow. parents that masks off their children. And I finally gave that to the superintendent in April of 2021. Um, and towards the end of that school year, we finally did win that and got masks off our children. But the frequent issue with uh, Dr. Deer is he doesn't like free speech. He doesn't want parents to be able to speak at his meetings. He wants to control um, what is spoke at school board meetings. And so I ended up filing several grievances against the district. Um, my first ever grievance was February of 2023 and was about me constantly being refused the ability to speak at school board meetings. Um, that is how I met Families Engaged because I reached out to an attorney, uh, Warren Norred, and he connected me with Families Engaged to help be a parent advocate for me because I could not afford to continue with legal representation at that time. I had already sent a demand letter to the school. It made matters worse, had to file these grievances. And that's how I um, met families engaged. So my first ever grievance was, was the violation of free speech, not being able to speak at school board meetings. And then I had another grievance in April 11th of 2022 because they refused to run their social emotional learning curriculum, which was second step through their shack committee of which I was a member of. And then I had a third grievance for a trespass warning letter that I received in March of 2022. And I filed that grievance um, and was denied. My trespass warning letter still stands. And I got a trespass warning letter for simply speaking at a school board meeting March of 2022 while I was running for school board for reading their star scores, Godly ISD star, star scores, reading them in a meeting and comparing them with Joshua ISD. That was so egregious that I received a trespass warning letter. Um, also had several other altercations with Dr. Deer, including um, he had grabbed me by the arm in a meeting and pulled me out mm -hmm. of a meeting. Um, I filed that with the former police chief, Jason Jordan, um, late 2022. And had he was 
was told by the attorney at that time, Cass Calloway, that he was not allowed to investigate my complaint. He would not be able to take it on. It would not be investigated. It would be swept under the rug. Um, he since has resigned for, as police chief. I filed it again in February of 2023 with new police chief Cantrell. And um, once again, it was closed with little to no investigation. Nothing was done. The superintendent was not held accountable for his actions of official oppression and assault. Um, so like I said, I ran for school board in May of 2022 and I lost. However, I ran again in May of 2023 and I won with the most votes of any ISD trustee in the history of Godley. Also a record voter turnout of over 20% of registered voters. Um, in my very first meeting where I was sworn into office, mm -hmm. the district, the policy on getting items on the agenda, where before for the history of ever in Godly ISD, any board trustee could have an agenda item added to a meeting to now my very first meeting, they change it to where three board members would be required to get wow. anything on, which is silencing right. my speech because Absolutely. or yeah. I can't speak about the issues, why my constituents elected me. I can't solve the problems of which they elected me for. It not only silenced my free speech, but it silenced the speech of citizens and the taxpayers as well. Um, Kayla, Kayla, real quick. So um, tell me, what was your platform when you ran for school board? What did you, what did you run on? I mean, what made the citizens get behind you so strongly? Because my that's a huge I affirmation. Yeah, my number one platform was free speech. I believe in free speech, wow. negative speech, all speech should be welcomed. Um, and so my, that was my number one platform was free speech. My second platform was transparency. There had been zero transparency in the school district. Documents were refused to be provided to the public. Uh, board meeting mm -hmm. agendas were super vague. Nobody knew what was going to be discussed. And then they would use that against parents and say you were speaking off topic and then trespass you. So um, those were my two main issues of why I ran. Um, and then this whole matter that we're seeing now blow up, the, up in the news really started in October when the school district created a long range planning committee, which is basically a bond planning committee. And I, as a school board member, actually found out about this committee secondhand. I had a citizen reach out to me asking me why they received a letter from the district saying that the school board um, set up this committee to plan our next bond. And I said, well, that's interesting. I didn't even know about it. So hey, wait, I wait, 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 yeah. wait. So to be clear, you're on the board and the superintendent is communicating with other board members and not, and not including you in that communication. Is that what you're saying? That, that he's not, and you're finding out what other board members are getting from the public. Correct. That so I not said, only, so he's basically not accepting the fact that you were elected and that you're correct. a member of that board. And if I understand correctly, um, even today, he is not giving you information that you asked for, that as a board member, you're entitled mm -hmm. to. And even down to the minuscule thing that, and, and if I, we're talking, going to talk about Ashley Ketcher's side today, I believe she had a the key code to get into the building and they won't even give that to you and you're a board member. I mean, right. I know oh, you, and when I was there with you, you had to, they had to come and let you in. Yes. So um, is, is, I mean, is that how serious they're discriminating against you? So a, a convicted prostitute has access, but a board trustee duly elected by her constituents, her peers. Hmm. I mean, yeah. I, Wait, now, and you know what I forgot to say in the beginning is that I, I left out the SHAC committee, which you had mentioned, the, the yes. school health, advise, health advisory committee, school, student, uh, what is that? Student. student, student health advisory committee. The SHAC committee is a very important committee where they're reviewing the sex ed curriculum. And this known and convicted prostitute was on that. And that was a huge part of the story is that it is that not only did she hold m multiple positions within the district uh, committees, but this is a key one is the sex ed one. And another thing that to note is she was not elected to the committee by the school board. The school board had a recommended uh, list of committee members to the school health advisory committee known as the SHAC in September of this year. 
Ashley's name was not on it. And it wasn't until October in that first meeting where she was seen on a video. She was addressed by the head of that committee, Brian Hunt, and she was listed on Shack meeting minutes on Godly ISD's website as a Shack committee member. But it's important to note that she was not put there by the school board. Do we know if there are any known clients uh, who are related to all of this of her since she did run a, a, a escort, an escort service? Do I know, know nothing. Her client list or anything like that? Yeah. No, we we did not. I mean, honestly, our focus and, and you know this one that families engaged issue was not with her. Um, families engaged issue was with the the failure of the school to do their due diligence and also the discrimination against uh, people who are legitimately concerned citizens. And so that was our concern about that. And, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, we were concerned about Miss Catcher's side and her family and her children. That's one thing that, you know, people have alleged that, that we were concerned about other kids, but not about her children. We are, but we are not. No, this is on Rich Deer. This is on Rich yes. Deer because you gave him an opportunity to do something about it. And that would have concealed, and, and the, if he had handled it, that Correct. would have concealed her name and the issue. It's still, Correct. he still could have addressed the problems and, and addressed the breakdown in the background checks and all of the, the, the places where those firewalls failed. He didn't do that. So this is actually on Rich Deer. So if anybody is complaining, if they, I mean, it, they certainly don't have a right to come after you, Kayla, because if you had not said anything and this came out, they would have come straight to you. Why didn't you do this? Because you're also a firewall. The school board, right. I mean, you are the fiduciary and you're the checks and balances and you were doing your due diligence. You were doing your job well, and, that you were elected to I, do. And Lynn, you know, look, we went, Families Engaged reached out to other board members and we've reached out to Rich Deer in the past and he has never returned our phone call. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were just grateful that Kayla was willing to go to him and make the appointment. And we at no point in time had given the evidence that we had that would remove any question as to whether or not this was gossip, that it yeah. was founded in fact. So we never let Kayla have that. Marcy Galley and I, both the families engaged, went with Kayla. Uh, and again, we didn't leave it up to Kayla. We said, no, we, this is the evidence that we have verified and mm -hmm. it is going to stay in the verified hands. And so we were very clear that the school, that Kayla represented the school and we were the outside entity. And we were, again, just grateful that Kayla would get the appointment with Deer so that Deer could do the right thing to protect children and really to let parents make a decision as to whether or not they wanted their children to be involved in um, godly cheer that she was running on the school. And there's a lot of... Um, mm -hmm. That's a big uh, deal because that's access to the children. Parents have no idea. They think that these people are, are, are screened. Yeah. They're screened yeah. and they're vetted. And clearly she was not. And, and we know that the schools are hotbeds of trafficking opportunities. So yes. that cannot be overlooked. We're not saying that's what she was doing, but if that was what some, if someone was doing something like that, you would certainly hope that the, we would have a background check that would then prevent them from being able to have access. Well, and this is, this is not a fly by night operation. I mean, she bragged on social media that she has very successful businesses and from everything that you can find about her, escort service, um, including, you know, all of the different services that she provides and her um, pornography sites. It's a very sophisticated business. And she and her husband are both uh, operating that business willfully together. So okay. I, hmm. I felt that it was critical that we not look back five years and find out that that children had been damaged because we were silent. I wasn't sure. willing to let that. But again, the issue here was the school had not done their due diligence. You know, here they wouldn't even let Kayla speak at a school board meeting about legitimate education issues. Yes. And they're opening the door to someone to literally almost every committee in the school that's not, right. not been in the community very long. I mean, that's a major red flag. So um, right. And, and you have to ask yourself, how did she get to that influential position? Well, I do ask that. But I, I mean, I, 
Okay. We know how hard it is to get on those. You have to establish yeah, right. I mean, they, they take the pillars of the community, supposedly, in all districts. All districts are pretty much the same in this way. I'm from Richardson ISD. You're in Grapevine, Colleyville, uh, Mary, and then Kayla, you being in Godly ISD. So, I mean, we're seeing the same tactics done when they do the stakeholder committee, which is the long range planning. When they have the bond committee, they pick the pillars of the community. These are people who are supposedly well respected and they have, they've been vetted and they were new to the community and they were not not vetted she was yeah. not vetted like, Kayla yeah. what was the name that so I think it's Huckabee Architects that comes and speaks at the long range planning committee and right. that, that's a whole other segment that we'll do sometime <laughs> about bond You're but right. they, Huckabee they do is the there bond. what did they tell the people that they're the ambassadors for the school what was it that they, they named them they gave them a special name to Ambassador. go out so that they yeah. would support the next bond it, it was right. They yeah, donate to the ridiculous. bond pack and then the bond passes and then these architecture companies, they get the contracts but, when they're building buildings, when even though the, the enrollment's declining, they're still building buildings. Yes. I just want to go through this timeline really quick so that yes, the public, that this was not a rash run to the news media, be a sensation. That is not what this was about. No. Um, really, this did start with Dr. Deer refusing the public entrance to listen and observe to these bond planning committee meetings mm -hmm. and on October 25th we decided to document with the video the district denying the public access and that blew up on social media um Ashley Ketcherside was the first commenter um throwing us under the bus for doing that video asking for me a school board trustee to be trespassed and then the cat fight ensued from there. I completely stayed out of the cat fight on social media. I, I try not to get into the weeds. However, that cat fight led to her bragging about her multiple businesses. And that led a citizen to, to just out of curiosity, see what does she do? How does she have successful businesses yet have this much time to volunteer in the schools? That is when she's working at night. Oh. Well, that's when they connected her address to these escort services and then when I got families engaged involved to help me find out how best to handle this first of all I wanted to make sure it was true and so families engaged did a further investigation to find out yes this really was her there was convictions and so I took immediate action to get with Dr. Deer to have a private meeting where we could lay out all this evidence for him so it was clear that this was not slander this was documented evidence and it was a child safety, a potential child safety concern. And so on November 1st, we had that meeting with Dr. Deer and uh, Mary Lowe and Marcy Galley uh, were with me at that meeting. And at first, Dr. Deer refused to meet with them. He only would meet with me. Yeah. Uh, and I made it clear that I do not have the evidence. They did not let me have that. So they had the packet of information. And mm -hmm. I just let him know that, hey, if you don't meet with these ladies, they will go to the media and it will make you look very bad. We're trying to protect you. We're trying to prevent embarrassment in this district. And so it is imperative that you meet with them and see this evidence so you can take action and come out looking squeaky clean. Um, so obviously, sadly, that didn't happen. There was, you know, wait, you know why it didn't happen? Because very rarely does the media pick up on these stories. We, there are all kinds of stories like this across Texas and across the nation. It's, it is difficult, even though schools are focused right now, it's difficult for them to take these stories for whatever reason they've got, they've been protecting them. So kudos to Dave, David Centendry, I think is how you say it. Uh -huh. Centen yeah. Centendry. Yeah. And, and he did and an excellent job. He, he verified job. everything that we gave him. And mm -hmm. I know for a fact that he, uh, that he gave Ashley Ketcherside multiple opportunities and she knew how to get in touch with him. So mm -hmm. I know that that he reached out to her um, via email and and phone call, and then of course the um, the the story shows that he even went to her house to give her an opportunity to uh, clear his name. He we've worked with a lot of media people, and he mm -hmm. has certainly been extremely professional and uh, unbiased mm -hmm. and very neutral, and we greatly respect. Uh, the professionalism he has brought to this story. So, uh, which is yeah, the number one of, story? Look on the trending, yeah. it's the number one story on Fox yeah. 4. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sadly, has, sadly, when we brought this to Dr. Deer on November 1st, he did not take immediate action. Instead, mm -hmm. there were several follow ups that I myself did. Uh, Marcy Galley emailed Dr. Deer, emailed Brian Hunt. 
instead of them taking action, they threw the whistleblowers under the bus. They blamed me and Mary and Marcy. Uh, they claimed that we withheld information. They claimed we were uncooperative. All of this was untrue. Um, in the meeting, they told them several times, you can take copies, you can take pictures, you can make copies of anything you want. Dr. Deer refused to do that. That's on him. Um, we did well, not. Kayla, I, you recall that, you know, it was clear for everybody in the room, both parties were recording. Dr. Deer was recording. I was recording. And it was also very clear that when we left, we gave him a specific timeline. We said, um, let Kayla know, because he does, he's not obligated to us, but he is obligated to you to let him know that, I mean, you, the board is technically his boss. And so we were very clear and said, please let Kayla know by Friday, preferably, but at the latest Monday, what course of action you're planning to take so that we don't go to the media with it. And, but otherwise we are going to go to the media with it. And um, he would not even respond, if I understand correctly, he wouldn't respond to your emails. He just completely ignored you. And we even said, Marcy said, I said, you need to call Lisa and Crass, the attorney, and find out what you can or can't do. So I hope as soon as we leave, that's your first phone call. And then Marcy said, you need to go to uh, Quinteros, Chief Quinteros. And so it was very clear what a course of action, and certainly we shouldn't come in and dictate to him, but we were not deceptive. We were very specific and clear, and he had access to anything he wanted. We just would not leave our packet with him. Correct. And I was very clear in a follow-up email on that day, November 1st, that I expected by Friday afternoon to have his course of action. And I expected a response from him. And when he did not respond to me that Friday afternoon, I sent another email and I let him know that no response is a response and that he had a legal obligation with what we presented to him. Um, instead of him taking action, he decided to reply to the whole board and to make up untruths about me and about Mary and Marcy and to rewrite the history of how that meeting went. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it took us it took me calling the Texas Rangers who then told me I needed to go to Godly PD and it took us going to Godly PD for anything to be done about this. And it was not until that happened that on November 14th, Dr. Deer finally said that she was removed from committees and volunteering. But even after that, the parents were not notified of this until mm -hmm. November 28th uh -huh. after the news released. So unfortunately mm -hmm. the parents had to find out from the news and not from Dr. Deer himself of what was going on. Yes. You're so talking about like to... like cheer parents and people who would have had some sort of interaction or their kids yes. would have a interaction with her. Kayla, what an excellent um, chronology of the way things unfolded that really outlines. But I, I want to say very clearly, this is not an isolated incident of failed leadership and it's not an isolated incident of him refusing to be transparent. Texas has an open meetings act and he violates that. Mm -hmm. And Texas also, uh, any government business, uh, with the exception of a few documents, are a matter of public record. And he has, I mean, right now I'm sitting with public records that I have requested that go back to this incident that would show, uh, did he have a contract with her? Did they have an agreement? Why was she advertising that the cheer clinics were at the school's address? You know, I was asking for uh, any communication between himself and the board members. What was he letting the board members know? And when was he letting the board members know? And we still can't get a handle on, did he go to the board? Uh, these are things we need to see the truth from the inside. And he should be making those available if he was acting according to his obligation. And I, this man has always failed to be transparent. He has mm -hmm. always um, oppressed speech and not just with you, but with many, many other people. And um, I don't believe he's fit for this job. And this school board needs to do their obligation. I know that Tassa and Tasby let both of them think that it is okay for him to be a tyrannical dictator of this school district. And I know that in small schools, in smaller towns, often the school is the biggest employer and, and citizens are concerned about, you know, bucking that system. Mm -hmm. But this is, 
this is a failure and it's not responsible and the school board must hold him accountable. You cannot and should not be the only one. And and for the, any, if the school, any go ahead. Embarrassment that the school district has any embarrassment. Dr. Deer is solely responsible for this. He Agreed. is the yeah. main reason that the yeah. news ever got involved. All blame, all accountability should be on his shoulders for his failure to act for how he treated whistleblowers and for for all of this. Um, this would never have had to go to the media ever, ever, ever if he had taken immediate action. Right. Well, we will continue, Kayla, to go to the source and discuss with the source according to Matthew 18 and give them an opportunity to do the right thing. And um, and we'll if people don't, we are going to continue to bring these things into light because it is imperative to parents being able to oversee their child's education. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for your service, Kayla. I know it's not it's not easy being on the board and taking the bullets. That seems to be what happens when you stand in the gap and try to protect children. Then, you know, uh -huh. that's when the darts fly. And so we appreciate you doing that and and um, serving the district like that. And uh, we will certainly continue to support you in that. And um, and so, OK, so uh, anything else in closing that we want to talk about? No, I also like to thank Families Engaged for the work that they do. It's free. They give out of their time freely and out of their own pocketbooks to stand in the gap for parents who can't afford legal representation. Mm -hmm. They're fighting districts who have all the legal representation in the world paid for by tax dollars. And so I think families engage for what they do to help advocate for parents and um, be that legal representation for them that they cannot afford on their own. Yeah, I mean, a big well, priority and to of ours. Really is, candid, yeah, it, it, we are just trying to teach. We're not legal representation, just to clarify that, because but we do know the education code and we want to teach parents. The reason we come and do that is because we want to empower the parents to be able to go in and do this for themselves, because you can. You're, you parents have the right to go and say, this is what I expect. So right. uh, you're the consumer and you're more than that, you're the parent. So thank you. And you have been yes. a great ally for us and you have been a great advocate for children. And uh, we, we just do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Talk soon. Bye-bye.